Welcome Star Wars fans all across the galaxy. This is the highly anticipated non-sports show of Uneducated Network. I'm your host Chris Lambert and this is Uneducated Star Wars Talk. This is my Star Wars show where I get to talk a little bit about the news in the Star Wars world, give my speculation on it, and just generally talk about the topics in Star Wars that's on my mind. Now today on the first episode, we're going to be touching on the two biggest things in the Star Wars news realm right now. That's the Han Solo fiasco and everything going on behind that, and the new animated series Forces of Destiny, which I which I was really looking forward to, and I, and I, and I like so far with the first episode debuting yesterday, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Now, first off with the Han Solo movie. What a mess. What a mess. What a mess. And I'm still looking forward to the movie, even though at the beginning when they first announced Hey, that we were doing a Han Solo movie. I wasn't too, I wasn't too up and on the up and ups about it, cause I was like, oh, how y'all gonna do that? How y'all gonna get a new character, new person to play Han Solo? One of the more beloved. He's not my favorite character, but one of the more beloved characters in Star Wars. So, start off, they got Phil Lord and Chris Miller uh, to direct the movie. Directors of the Lego movie, 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street. So I bet that's some comedy guys. And I was okay with that because I knew the movie would need a little comedy because Han Solo is one of the more funnier characters in the universe. But he's not just like a comedian. He's, he's, he's situationally funny. So I thought Phil Lord and Chris Miller maybe would have been able to balance that. So I've dumped that kind of, not red flags, but cause for pause for me. Uh, with the movie. On top of I really questioning how they would handle the movie. And then they got the actor Alden Ironreich. I hope I'm saying it right. But he played in Hell Season. It was a great part of that movie. One some argue that they used the best part of that movie. But and then um they got Lando and then they have a mentor for Han Solo, which you I, I hear was supposed to be maybe the villain in the uh, movie as well. But looking forward to that. And so it turned out like last week, maybe two weeks ago, that they um, Lucasfilm and Miller and Lloyd had split ways, and that they was having what they call creative differences. And everybody hates that term in the in the movie industry because that could really come mean anything. But let them tell it, Lucasfilm and Phil Phil Lloyd and Chris Miller, that it truly was creative differences that they just had to part ways. My thing is with it, it's been five months since y'all started shooting this movie. Y'all started shooting this movie in January. Y'all had all of pre-production to find out that y'all wouldn't be on the right page and figure out y'all creative differences. Five months in the film and it took y'all to realize that they wasn't shooting the Han Solo that, that you idealized that they would do. And... No way am I blaming Phil Lord and Chris Miller because hey, I, I would direct the Star Wars movie too if they asked me. But I feel like they should have known, Lucasfilm more so should have known, like, hey, these guys are more so known for doing what they want to do. Reports came out that they was, they was doing a lot of improvisation on the scenes and that they was getting away from the script and all that. And I, that's another reason why I, I kind of understand Lucasfilm in this because... This is Lawrence Kasdan, write the, wrote the script for the movie. Also wrote the script for the best Star Wars movie ever in Empire Strikes Back. Knows Han Solo like the back of his hand. So he's writing a Han Solo movie, and it's supposed to be his last movie. So he want to go out He want to go out like Kobe, he's going 60. So, so of course, they're going to be real protective of it. So, I... <sighs> It's just a mess. It's just a mess. You want to do right by him, but you also want to have let your directors have some creative freedom. But also, it was a it was an article put out that they hired an acting coach for Alden Ironic. See, initially, it was an article put out that I think it was Variety put put that article out about uh, Alden Ironic going to Kathleen Kennedy, the, the president of the Lucasfilm, and being like, "Hey, I don't think the." character is coming off the way that y'all would like it and being portrayed the way y'all would like it, you might want to check into this. And a couple of days later, it, um, it's a story that they hired an acting coach, so everybody reacting like, oh, Arden Irick's so bad and they they don't like him and stuff like that. I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that. I think Phil Lord and Chris Miller had a different direction they was going in. 
And because he's been doing that for like the last five months or whatever it's been, they're like, we're going to hire a guy to help you bring it in the direction that we want. We we probably, they're probably still high on him and still think he can capable of playing the role. But, you know, we want to make sure you're to the best of your ability you can play this role. So we're going to spend money on this guy to help you with your performance. So by no means do I think that means he sucks. Right? That means he sucks. But what I think about the what I think about, like I said at the beginning, I think it's just a mess. I think it's a mess. I think they should have known. They should have came to this decision a while ago, not not five months within the uh, filming process. I think they have three weeks left to film, and they hired uh, director Ron Howard, an Oscar winner actually, to uh, finish up the movie. He's going to be in ch- charge of the rest of the shooting and the reshoots and the editorial process and the post-production and all that. So, and like I said, he's an Oscar winner. He's been around the Star Wars universe. He actually directed George Lucas' first film, Willow. And so, you know, he, he's got clout around Lucasfilm. And also, I read that he, uh, George Lucas approached him to do episode one. So, he's, a, he, he's, he's directly in the heart of Star Wars. So, you know, not a, not a bad choice. And um, they say he's like that that common presence as a director. His director chops, I'm not I'm not too really sure because I, I haven't checked out a lot of his movies. I hear he's, he's really hit and miss with more hits than misses. I, I would say he's an Oscar winner. I think that was a beautiful mind that won an Oscar. And the Cinder, Cinderella Man, I know I've seen that. And that, that was a great movie. I, I did like that from him. But um, another one of my movies, uh, I've seen the, the Grinch. So Christmas, he did that too for whatever does that work. And that's just really a nostalgia thing with me. That was my childhood. So... Whatever that's worth, he directed The Grinch Stole Christmas. I don't know how you like it. But uh, also The Da Vinci Codes in Inferno. Nah, I don't really care about them. But in short, I think, uh, I hope he's able to take it in good hands, finish up the movie, push it back if you have to. I, the last thing we want to see is the movie get rushed and it's end up being a bad movie because y'all didn't want to just push it back. Which I, Where do you push it back to? Because if you push it back to December, I do believe, I know for sure Aquaman comes out. And I do believe it's another Disney property that comes out as well. So you don't want to be competing with your with yourself if you're Disney. You don't want to have Star Wars and Frozen 2. You don't you don't want to have uh, you don't want to have Han Solo competing with Frozen 2. So I can see why not push it back. And you don't want to push it back a whole year because then that'll be May turn around in December, episode nine come out. So, I don't. I don't really know what they do. I say push it back to December. Hey, if, you, if that's what you need, get it right. Push it back to December. Go head up against Aquaman. Your Star Wars. What you got to fear? But that, that's all I really wanted to say about the Han Solo uh, film. I really hope they get it under works because uh, I want to. I want to see any movie that the Star Wars franchise is coming out. But I, I, was, I, I began getting really excited after, like I say, initially not even wanting the movie. I began getting excited with the cast, with all, with all the fun that they said they was having on set. They they made it. They was painting this perfect picture uh, months ago, months in and weeks ago. Because I want to say we just got some pictures from them on set, and they made it out like it was all good. I just hope they can get it together. But now, forces of destiny debut yesterday. Ray's episode, Ray's first episode. I'm sure she'll have more. Sands of Jakku. It was cute. It was cute. It, it, the monster in it, I, I forget what Ray called it. I watched it a couple times. I haven't got around to showing my kids, uh, my my girls it yet. So I think they'll really like it. I like the art style. The art style actually reminds me a lot of the first Clone Wars series. I forget who directed it, but it reminds me of that art style. This is the, that Clone Wars series isn't canon anymore. More on that word later on down the line if you need. But... It, it, it was cute, and I, I, I really like Ray. Uh, Daisy really rep- reprising her role as Ray in the series, and it's good to have that to have the actors from the movies playing in animated stuff too. That, that's cool. It just gives the feel to it, and they even had the Ray theme playing at the beginning of it. And I, that's one of my favorite pieces of music right now is Ray's theme. So I, I really liked it that. Uh, like it's not nothing but two, uh, not even, more three minutes long, but. 
it's not really much to talk about. It was, it was cute. And what I did want to say is, they still focusing on her staff a whole lot. Like, every, a lot of people say that about in The Force Awakens. They, like, they cut close scenes to her staff a couple times. And they, like, really put her staff in the spotlight. I don't feel that way about The Force Awakens. But in this animated short, it... It's pretty clear that that, that that staff wrecked some shop, so I'm interested to see what they what they do with the staff. Does she just make it a lightsaber, like put her lightsaber crystal in it and have it a dual a dual lightsaber staff? I'm interested in that. I want to see how that go. But that's all really with the news this week. I'll touch back tomorrow or in the next couple of days. I want to give y'all a breakdown of Battlefront and why I'm excited about that and why you should be excited about that. But that'll be all today. And like with everything else, give a like, comment, and subscribe. See y'all next time.